So I, I, I have to laugh. Um, I am the reluctant public speaker and the reluctant networker. So it's kind of funny that that's what I have to talk to you about. Um, just a show of hands. Fear of public speaking. Fear of snakes. Fear of Donald Trump presidency. <laughs> okay. Fear of networking. Right? If I could change that word, I would. It's the one we're stuck with. Um, and I hope I change how you think about it. Because while we're here at a tech conference, it's human relationships and people. It's not platforms. It's not an app. It's human relationships that drive economies, drive ideas, and create possibility. And that's how I want you to think in terms of the importance of who you're sitting next to and why you're attending a conference like this. Now, Anne touched on it. Um, I really did, flying over here from New York City, I, I really did think long and hard in terms of what could you learn from me? You know, a 50-year-old woman who lives in New York, where's Monica, alone, okay? <laughs> Um, but I talk to people on subways, because, you know, if there are armpits in your face, you might as well talk to them. Um, and you learn a lot about tattoos and things, and it freaks other people out when you talk to them, and that in and of itself um, is amusing. So what could you learn from me, and for so many of you, what could you learn from someone who graduated from high school in 1983, graduated an undergraduate in 1987, came out of law school in 1991, and decided to make a career change, the first one in 2001, 2002, and the second one in 2009. Now, I mentioned the dates, because so for many of you millennials in the room, some millennials, okay? You and I have a big bond. We have a lot in common. The economy sucks. Right? 83, 87, 91, 2001, 2002, 2009, recessions. They're all turbulent economic times, and you're going through that now. And how do you ride those things? I'm going to you know, kind of give you three tips. Um, only thing that explains my career at this point in my life, you know, I, I mean, I came from an era where you graduated and you got a job and you got job security, right? Keep your head down, do good work, accept your promotion, right? Work your way up the corporate ladder, right? That doesn't exist anymore. Even if, if we thought it existed then, it, didn't, it doesn't exist. And all of you are going to create your own careers. And it's great to come after all the speakers have all been, already been here. They've said everything that I have to say. So, you know, I might buy Anne a few minutes of time. Um, so my career only makes sense if you look at the relationships and if I look back at the people and the connections and the self-promotion that Purnima talked about, putting yourself out there and constantly engaging with other people, it's the only way my career can be explained. And from having networks, it's what, as I said, I want you to rethink what networking is. It's about putting yourself in the position and place of, of making things possible for yourself and for other people. So I have three tips. We'll get really down and dirty practical here. Three things that I hope in terms of imparting, particularly to those of you who are embarking on new careers, starting your career. For those of you who are changing your career, or those of you who have you know, some other ambition in there, so basically all of you, um, uh, three tips, okay? And the first one is build your expertise. Be known for something. And I want to pick up on what Purnima said, I want you to own your expertise. And I want you also to think about, in terms of adding on to your expertise, I think curiosity or, and inquiry are the only two skill sets that are not going to be redundant in the next five years. So be willing to relearn and create a new expertise. 
So that's my, my first kind of bit of advice, is build your expertise. My second bit of advice is build your network. Ideas without a network are simply ideas. Careers without relationships that you're relying on a help wanted ad. You're putting your career into the hands of somebody else to promote you or recognize your talent. It's anonymous, you're not in the driver's seat. Build your network and engage it and build it before you need it. The career change I made in 2000, I said I made a career change in 2001, 2002, I had to build a completely new network of relationships to land that next job, which I landed 18 months later. Not a lot of us have that luxury, right? Build your networks before you, you, you need them. And how do you do that? I want you to rethink what networking is, because I already said I'm the reluctant networker. If you said to me, hey, Kelly, put on a name tag and walk into a room of strangers, I'd be like, is, can I have a dental appointment instead? Is this kind of like, would you rather? You know, you know, could I have to go to a Donald Trump rally? Like, I'll do anything but like, have to go into like, a room full of strangers, right? None of us want to do that. I want you to rethink what it is. Networking is every single human interaction. That's your voicemail message. Signature line on your email. Where you chose to sit today. It doesn't need to involve balancing a wine glass and a plate with you know, tiny things you're trying to stuff in your mouth before someone talks to you, right? Every single human interaction. Your ability to walk down the hall and talk to someone rather than messaging them. Where you choose to sit in a co-working space. Which co-working space you decide to join, right? So, Start from the top again, build your expertise, build your network, right? Think about where your expertise should be. Because the other point is, in this era, it's not who you know or what you know, it's who knows what you know. So that's why I get to back to owning your expertise and where and who you're interacting with and letting them know what you know. My third point might not be, you know, I say, what you often think about with respect to networking, but networking is now, I think, how we, and relationships, is how we fuel our careers, our startups, our ambition. So my third piece of advice is build your bank account. <laughs> Those of you who have jobs, congratulations. Do not apologize in this world of obscene focus on startups, and entrepreneurship ever apologize for having a job. There is power in having a job. Think about all the people you're meeting. Think about all the people you're interacting. Think about the power of a paycheck. You can get a credit card if you have a paycheck. Guess what you can get when you have an, you're an entrepreneur? There's nothing, right? Okay? And if you're thinking, I want to do something else, right? That job is a stepping stone to that next thing because you can build your bank account. That third piece, that building the bank account, and why I put this in this whole notion of networking, is what has enabled me to do what I have done. You know, how do you spend a year writing a book? You have a bank account. I don't have to ask somebody else's permission to do something. It enabled me to speak out more at work. It enabled me to angel invest. It enabled me to, to build the career that I wanted to have. And so, like I said, you know, when I sat there on the flight from Manhattan and New York and was like, okay, what can they learn from me? What can they learn from this Canadian who's 50 years old and like irrelevant in terms of so many of you in terms of life experience? I was like, oh, let's look back on my career and what is it? And all those three pieces together is what has fueled my ability to do what I want to do. So, build your expertise, build your network build your bank account, and create that career and put yourself in the position of possibility that you want. Thank you. Want to be in the audience next time? Click here for tickets to InspireFest 2017.